Well, Alex, firstly, tell us about your collaboration with JG yeah. on the video. Well, uh, we met through Twitter a couple of years ago. Um, I was just randomly, I saw John Gregory on Twitter and it's his Springsteen's number one fan. I'm a big Springsteen fan, so I sent a random tweet, something about Springsteen came back and then we got chatting. I sent John my music. You asked, you asked what's my favourite three albums? What's top three albums? Right. I can't remember what he said now. <laughs> Tom Joad. I said Tom Joad, Tunnel of Love. And uh, might have been Nebraska. Yeah, I was, I was pretty suicidal. I was suicidal at the time. I think. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. Yeah. It was a bit low. <laughs> I was a bit low. Yeah. And um, yeah. and it just stemmed from there. And I sent John uh, some music, and he really liked it. And we met in London a few times. Came to my gigs. You said you had a mu you said you had an album on on iTunes. Yeah, my first album, mm. Lonesome first Train. Lonesome Train was on iTunes, and I can remember thinking, he must be pretty good if he's on <laughs> iTunes. He's got an yeah. album on iTunes. He must be like half decent. So I downloaded it off, off iTunes and um, sat, almost sat and listened to it straight away. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, it's amazing, you know, um, my kind of music. And that's kind of how it all started, really. Yeah, and then um, I, I was making a music video and I kind of <coughs> just said, do you fancy playing a cameo appearance? And uh, he <laughs> said yes, kind of accepted. So we, we got a part and John plays a doorman in a video. <laughs> Norman the doorman. <laughs> And um, <laughs> and that was it, really. Yeah, just. But I sent it to a couple of friends first, and they I didn't tell them anything about John. Yeah. And they were literally watching it, Villa friends, and they went, "Was that? Was that? Yeah, 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 yeah." Yeah, yeah and that was it. Yeah, it's easy. And oh, you have to tell them about Liam Gallagher. Yeah. Oh yeah, the um, I've been working with Bonehead um, on a project called Phonies and the Freaks, and put an EP out last year, and uh, I think Bonehead sent it to Liam, um, and he was watching it. He went, who's that, who's that geezer? He goes, I know his yeah. face. And Ben's like, what are you on about? He goes, who's that geezer there? Yeah, he goes, ex-manager. I don't know what you're on about. He goes, he's ex-manager, who is he? He's like, oh yeah, strong guy. He goes, that's, that's it, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Obviously Springsteen, big influence on both of your lives, isn't it? Yeah, um, he's one of my big influences. And just, just from when I watched him live for the first time about eight years ago, and he's just phenomenal live, like a class apart. And every every gig's different. Every gig would be about three and a half hours. And um, uh, a big influ influence really is a songwriter. And um, it was just funny again going back to Twitter because obviously I'm a big Villa fan and John Gregor. I didn't know he was a big Springsteen fan at the time. Yeah. Saw so him here in '88, which was uh, which was amazing. Uh, he played in front of the North Stand, and the Holt was not covered. I don't think the Holt was covered in those days. I'm sure yeah. it wasn't. Um, but I can remember everyone down all the way down the field and all up into the Holt. Um, 40 odd thousand here. Um, it was an amazing day. Tunnel of Love tour. Uh, he just, uh, I think his marriage was just breaking up, his first marriage, and uh, he was dating one of his band members. But that was, uh, yeah, I can remember seeing that here. And um, ended up seeing him everywhere. And funnily enough, I saw him on a Aston Villa pre-season tour of America. Oh, did you? Really? In 99. In July '99, and I swear to God, it wasn't pre-arranged. Mm. Um, we got invited to play in New York in a 14 tournament tournament with uh, Fiorentina, Rapid Vienna, ourselves and Ajax, mm. and um, Batistuta was playing for Fiorentina in those days. Probably the best striker around at that particular time. Anyway, we got invited to go in, uh, to go to New York. Steve Stride asked me, do you want to go? It fits in these dates. You fly out on the Thursday, play Friday night, Saturday night off, play Sunday, fly back Monday, and we get a lot of money for it. Mm. So I said, yeah, sounds great. New York, fantastic. The boys will love it. We went. He called me in his office about a week later, and he said, you know the Saturday night, we got a night off in New York. You'll never guess who's playing next door to the giant stadium where we play their matches, next door at the Continental Arena, Bruce Springsteen. What a coincidence. Oh, God, you're joking. <laughs> so, of course, as soon as it came out that Bruce was playing that night, all the lads thought we were only going to this tournament because of, of Bruce. But I have to say, it was because um, of the football first and then mm. we found. And, of course, 
chairman wanted to go, Doug mm. wanted to go and see Bruce Springsteen, yeah. even though he wasn't quite sure who he was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we went to see him, it was amazing. So I've actually seen him in New York as well, which was uh, his hometown, yeah. of course. I don't want to embarrass Alex, but what, what, what is it about his, his voice that sort of appeals to you then, uh, John? Uh, you, well, you're a real connoisseur this type of thing. Yeah, I think the, the first thing that hit me was that he, he writes all his own stuff. Mm. And um, which, um, to someone like me, is, is quite amazing. The fact that somebody can actually sit down, write a song, mm. for it to be so good uh, and play at the same time, and just put the whole thing together himself. Um, and I think that initially hit me, uh, how good he was to sing a songwriter. He's not just singing cover songs. He's not just singing other people's songs uh, or old hits. Um, he's singing all his own stuff that he's, he's sat down and written and, and he's in it to make a living out of it. He's in it for real. He wants to be as uh, the likes of how Springsteen started. Springsteen mm -hmm. started from nothing. They were all nothing once upon a time. Uh, and the money raised by the single is going to go to a very worthy cause, I believe, Alex. Yeah, there's um, a foundation called the Harry Mosley, um, helping Harry up others organisation and I was speaking to Ian Taylor who's an ambassador for it um, and I just thought it'd be a good a good opportunity to raise money for a great cause, um, raise money for, for brain cancer research so all the, all the proceeds from the single um, will be going towards that charity um, so when it's out the yeah, 27th of, uh, November um, just digital. Get out and buy it. <laughs>